<laughs> He's laying by the stove, but it ain't on. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by back here in the back of the coffee shop. And before we go any further, I'd like to tell y'all, be sure and check that website periodically because we're fixing to start hosting some events here and you don't want to miss out. But hey, warmer weather is coming and you know what that means? Camping time. Ooh, it's time to get out in the woods, time to go to state parks, time to bring the family together and let's talk about cooking and cooking in a Dutch oven. Now it's not as scary as it might seem or I wouldn't even be able to do it, but I'm gonna walk you through all the best tips and the tricks to make Dutch oven cooking easy as it can be. Now there's two kinds out there. There's a camp oven and a Dutch oven. Now camp ovens, they got legs. Uh, legs, yeah, I'm talking about they can walk off if they want to. See them there on the bottom, them little three right there? That is so they will sit right there and be off the ground. Now let's move over here to the Dutch oven, look flat bottomed and most of them have a domed top lid now this one has a lid that has a lip all the way around it it's still beveled just a tad it's made to bake with because the coals will fit on there and not fall off so if you're going camping leave this one at the house okay let's take this one because we can bake in it we can fry in it we can do so much things but it's got the leg it'll hold the coals on top with this lid the number one question that we always get on YouTube or email for people that's just starting out, wanting to go camping, wanting to buy a Dutch oven, and that is, what size do I get? Well, I don't know, maybe, how many of you is it? Two of you, three of you, four of you going out there to camp? The more the merrier, but a 10 inch Dutch oven, which is probably the smallest size that I've ever used, is just right for like two people. The 10 inch, like I say, you can probably get close to 12 biscuits in there, and they're good for baking pies, baking brownies, but I would say probably if I was gonna have to pick an oven that I could tell you, hey, this is what you need to cook with to start with because the 12 inch is probably my go-to oven most of the time because you can feed like four or five people out of here, but also you can rewarm the leftovers cause you're gonna have some maybe, but also it does well to what? casseroles, anything like that, and it's gonna make enough that you can really have a hearty helping for everybody around the fire. So let's talk about this 12 inch oven. Now you can see this oven is this tall. Now this is what I'd call a 12 inch shallow oven. Now let's move his brother over there and this is what we would call a 12 inch deep. Now, I'm gonna cook my pies in here. I'm probably gonna cook my cakes in here sometimes, but if you've got a cake that's really gonna rise up and it's tight, gonna get really close, cause when you got a cake in here and it rises up to the top right here, look how close you are to the lid in them top coals. So if you're just starting out cooking in a Dutch oven, I would cook my cakes in here, I would cook my brownies in here, I would cook my pies in here because you've got more room to regulate your coals till you get it figured out, but then go back to this because that, that pie that's that thick with one of them good sourdough pie crust in here is really well. But either one of them, hey, serves the purpose of you can do anything in the house with it that you can do outside with it. Bake, fry, baked potatoes, biscuits, cornbread, cobblers, anything in the world, these two are probably the most two recommended ovens that I would tell you to start with. Now, if you're looking for more information on what you need to know before you buy a piece of cast iron Dutch oven or skillet, we have a buying guide out there and there'll be a link to it on where you can see that video. But folks, look at it because you need to know those things before you go shopping. Folks, there's really two things that you're gonna need if you're gonna cook in a Dutch oven that you have to take with you because I don't think you're gonna find them out there in Mother Nature's kitchen. One is a lid lifter and the other is a shovel. Now, if you've seen me on our videos cook, you've seen that shovel that I got. It's got them holes in it. Now, them holes are in there for a purpose. So when you reach in your fire to get coals, shake it right quick, sifts the ash out. Ash doesn't cook, but it does insulate. And you can't come up here with a bunch of hot coals on a Dutch oven and do this. Now, you might could with some of them gloves, but they're going to end up burning your fingers. Get you a lid lifter of some kind, and we have a video out there where we did a lid lifter review. But if you're ever in a mine and you ain't got none of them, go look in the pickup. Everybody's got one of these. It's called a hammer, and they work pretty well as a Dutch oven lid lifter. They are a little close to the fire, 
but they'll fit each and every lid. So let's talk about a heat source, because hey, we're not taking that one flat bottom oven out there with us where we got a propane gas stove. We are actually cooking with wood, yes. Now, some of you is out there saying, I'm gonna use briquettes. Don't let me know you did. And they got stuff in there and so many carcinogen, carcinogens and glue that hold all this stuff together. Don't use them. Either burn you some really good hardwood or take you a sack of hardwood lump with you. Hardwoods is gonna make a better coal than like your pine and your cedars. Try to stand you some oak, some mesquite, some hickory, pecan, something like that, and you'll have a good source of fire, but it'll make a good amount of heat. Now, when we're talking about hardwood lump, I'm talking about hardwood lump charcoal, okay? This is wood that has been burned, starved for oxygen and sealed, and folks, it is real wood, makes good coals, it does. And now, you don't have to cut it, which is nice. That's right, you ain't got to take the chainsaw or the ax with you. And you can buy it nearly anywhere, Home Depot's, Lowe's, Walmart, everybody got it anymore. But you know them briquettes that you thought about using until I changed your mind? I'm gonna let you in on another secret, I am. Everybody's always telling me they got this formula where you put six on the bottom around the outside edge, 12 of them on top, and you're at 350 degrees. When the wind's blowing 40 miles an hour, them things will ash out so quick that you'll have to refire three times to cook something. Not with hardwood lump. If that wind's blowing, that stuff is hotter. Real wood, it's gonna burn always hotter than briquettes. Now, the way I tell that stuff is really hot after you've fired an oven up, and remember, we've sifted the ash out of it, and it's just got coals on it, but we've been cooking, let's say, 15, 20 minutes and you want to see if you need to add more heat to this. Now, I usually try this test here. Don't set your hand on it, but know that you're about that distance from it and you're holding your hand there. And then count one, two, three, four, five. If you count more than five before you have to pull it out of the way, get your lid lifter, take that lid, shake them coals off there, put you some fresh ones on there because remember, ash doesn't cook. And that's the same as down here around the outside edge of the Dutch oven too. Now the most important thing about Dutch oven cooking is coal placement and how to regulate your temperature when you're cooking something in a Dutch oven. I think the probably the biggest mistake that I see people make when I walk around either in a campground or people used to come to cooking school is they put coals all up under here. I mean everywhere. Stack them under there. Some of them don't even got a trivet. They'll just stack them all under this Dutch oven. Ha! Uh -uh. No, because you're going to burn something. We're going to go around the outside edge of this Dutch oven. We can take the lid off and see what's happening on top, but you're telling yourself, this is not Pyrex. I, it's not glass. I can't see what's in there. How am I going to know if it's going to burn? Well, always, number one, start with less coals than you think if you're using really good hardwood coals because it doesn't take near as much heat as you think. Cast iron holds heat well and it will transfer it pretty even. Keep them coals on the outside edge of that Dutch oven unless you're trying to target heat. Now, you can cook cakes in these things and you get to going over there and you think, hey, I've stuck a stick in the outside edge and it comes out clean. But when I stick that stick in the middle, it looks like jello. I give it the wiggle test. I just take a boot heel and kick it just simple there. And if it's still jiggling in the middle, it ain't done. So what do we do? Rake all them coals out everywhere. Then I'm gonna put a coal right in the center, put coal right here around this bale on this lid. We are targeting heat. When do you need, what are these called, Shem? Trivet, yeah. People will be asking me, what is a trivet? A trivet is a pot holder for a hot piece of iron. Ours have legs on them. Yes, they do. Now they are adjustable, three inch and about five and a half. Right here they are. So you say, well, it's got legs on it. Do I need more? Yes, you do. Especially if you're just starting cooking. Now I've cooked with them just like this and that's a whole different method of cooking. And we sell these on the website come with both set of legs so you'll have whatever you need, but you can see how this fits on there. You're raised up there. It's a way to regulate your heat. We're still putting coals around the outside edge. And what would we use this smaller trivet for? If I was baking casseroles, something like that, to regulate heat, remember we told you that a while ago, during the cooking process, rotate 
the bottom of the oven one way, the lid the other. Now, any hot spot that you really had is transferred. We're trying to regulate it to keep it even if you had more coals on one side than the other. But let's get rid of this short trivet and let's use this tall one. Now, I love a tall trivet, especially if the wind is blowing. And folks, it blows here a lot in our country. But if I'm cooking pies, cakes, brownies, something like that, I want to be as far from this heat source as I can and using good hardwood lump, you're still going to get enough heat to cook this. When we're going camping and hey, sometimes the weather can be a little of anything, especially down here in Oklahoma. You can have spring in the winter and summer in the fall. You never know what you're going to get. But when you wake up in the morning and you crawl out of that bedroll in that little old tent that you got and say it's 35 degrees and you're thinking, man, I got to warm up and I'm cold. I'm going to tell you this, cast iron gets cold too. Never just take a cold piece of cast iron and just go ahead and start baking it right on the money because you need to preheat this oven, right? Wrong. You are going to pre-warm this oven. All recipes tell you to preheat. Now, when you're cooking in a Dutch oven, the only time you preheat any piece of cast iron is if you're going to sear something in it. Pre-warm it to where it's body temperature. Cast iron does not like to be shocked from one extreme to the other. Now, if you're a beginner too, or say you just don't really have time, you think to clean up your Dutch oven proper, they do make inserts that fit in these. Yes, this says 12. A 10 inch pie pan, and you can get them a lot of, we get them like, hey, at wedding cake places, they're aluminum, they'll be about like that. It's just that. like a cake pan. Yeah. yeah, and they'll fit right in here. Now, when you're gonna think about using one of them inserts in one here, there's a very important tool that you need to have with you other than that hammer. That's a pair of pliers because you can't just reach in there with your fingers and pull that out when it's done. But before you put that insert in there, because there's nothing touching the bottom of this oven besides this cast iron against that aluminum pan. Rub you a little oil in there first, just a tad, because we want to keep that cast iron a little moist down there when it starts. That way it doesn't just dry out and blister it all at once. But also another tip I'm going to give you, if you think you need a little barrier in there, take your horseshoe with you, set that horseshoe down in there, then put that pie pan in there. You're giving yourself a little air barrier in there, and it's going to take longer to cook than you think. But just remember, hey, it's a great way to start out. You're not as apt to burn something. And if people tell you I ain't never burnt nothing in a Dutch oven, they ain't cooked in one very long. I got a little expert fun tip that I learned the hard way. Yes, I did. Now, when you go camping or something, and it happens to me every once in a while, I'm always forgetting something. And you go ahead and you get them biscuits made and you put in this Dutch oven and you go back over there to the pickup truck, you forgot to bring the skillet. Oh my gosh, and we got to fry some bacon. What are we going to do? Because we'd love for that to come out about the same time it is. Take that lid off. Look what you have now, a skillet. Uh-huh, you can scramble eggs on it. You can fry bacon on it. And folks, people ask me this question a lot too. Do I season underneath? Do I do this lid and the bottom both? This is a, a surface that retains moisture. When you cook something, it makes steam a lot of times. If you don't season this every once in a while, you'll get rust. What is probably the best thing that you can cook in a Dutch oven if you've never cooked nothing before? What do you need to start out with? Well, I think probably the easiest thing are like casseroles because folks, some of that stuff is already pre-cooked in there. You brown the meat or something like that. The onions are tender and you can take the lid off and sort of stir it. So that's probably the, the easiest thing that you can cook. Now, if you're talking about really doing a baked good, I would probably start with cornbread because when you're cooking something in this Dutch oven and now you, you know it ain't got a knob that says 350, it ain't got a timer that says ding, I am done. How do we know that the bottom isn't burnt, but it's nearly done? Well, anything that you're baking in a Dutch oven will separate from the inside of this lip just a little. I ain't talking about a half inch. I'm talking maybe an eighth. You'll see it. It'll sort of just begin to shrink and pull. Now, when it does that, that cast iron is telling you that bottom is nearly done. Take it off here. There is enough residual heat from that cast iron that it's gonna finish cooking. This is not aluminum, stainless steel, copper. You can't just take it off fire and carry it off somewhere. It is still hot. 
but some dishes that I would recommend also, the casserole, sparkling potatoes, baked bean casserole, hominy and green chilies. Now one of me and Shan's favorites that we do love to cook and it's oh so easy, especially the first night in on a ranch when maybe it's just us that we're cooking for, is pizza. Throw that pizza right in that oven, go ahead and bake it. You know what you can do? You can take a spatula and pick it up and see under there what's happening. You get that crust however you want it, Hey, get it out of there and let's eat it. It is probably the easiest thing there is to cook in a Dutch oven. Whew. We have talked about a lot of stuff here about Dutch ovens, cast iron, cooking. Hey, hammers, pliers, we covered it all, we did. But all the videos that we mentioned and everything that you might need to know if you forgot something, there'll be little links down there below to where you can check all this out. And you know what makes a good Dutch oven cook? Practice, practice, and more practice. Now you may, you may fail. You may burn something, I have. Don't get discouraged, just keep cooking. We thank you for stopping by here. We hope you learned something about Dutch ovens because hey, they are a great thing to cook with. As always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans and everybody that's keeping that old flag safe back there to fly wherever we may be. And for the rest of you, come on in here. Ain't no food, ain't no dancing, ain't nothing today is their mage. Look at him, he said it wasn't nothing to eat, not a thing. We appreciate you one and all. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to watch this video. Come on in here and let me give you a big hug. God bless you each and every one and I'll see you down the what? Cast Iron Trail. On the outside of the out... Wee. Now, phew, gotta back up. So folks, if you like this video and you need some more information on cast iron do's and don'ts, tips and tricks, well be sure and check out what? Our buying guide on cast iron, but also there is a cast iron playlist that'll walk you through so much information, you'll be a cast iron expert when you get through.